I thought getting out to Baltimore for 3D Printopia meant that we were going to outrun a hurricane, but apparently when we get back, we have another one. Hurricane Milton is on the way, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to be posting Print Fix Friday. We've got a big talk about right to repair and what it means for this industry. Prusas that are having a couple little issues. And, uh... Was the oven set to 200 degrees Celsius or 200 degrees Fahrenheit? All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 161. Let's get into it. Starting off, we got... Marcel here asking, has anyone ever changed one of these pulleys? My Kickstarter X1C has a worn out pulley, but replacing it seems almost impossible. Any advice? They submitted a ticket. Bamboo Lab replied saying, hello, thank you for contacting Bamboo Lab support. I am the technical support agent assisting you with this matter. I regret to inform you that the idler shown in your image cannot be replaced. I sincerely apologize for any inconvenience this may cause you. Please let me know if you have any other questions or if I can assist you with anything else. So your multi-thousand dollar 3D printer is not repairable and therefore ends up becoming waste. Now, to be fair, Joshua Mura has done it. So it is technically possible, but it's not supposed to be possible. You can see it, it requires a lot of disassembly on these machines. This comes down to the right to repair. That something that you have, you should be able to repair it. The machines behind me, even though they're not running right now because we're slowly shutting down the farm and we're only keeping some of the high speed printers online to produce uh, hurricane shutter tools for people. They are like five plus years old and I can still not only repair them, but still get parts for them. And there is nothing on those printers that is not immediately either serviceable or replaceable without needing to replace the whole 3D printer. This industry, the consumer grade 3D printing industry, was founded on the laurels of open source for the likes of Adrian Boyer, who I would love to have as a podcast guest. So Dr. Boyer, if you happen to be watching this, if so, hey, thanks, first off, but two, would love for you to be a podcast guest because I would love to talk about kind of the history of rep rap and why it's such a big deal and why things like this could easily be solved if we all just played in open source. Because unfortunately, closed source means that you can't fix these pieces without terrible and terrifying levels of disassembly. Bamboo is standing up to what they said. They want to be the apple of 3D printers and Yep, they're being the Apple of 3D printers, making it so their devices can't be replaced and they're going to build an entire third-party market for people selling counterfeit or less than okay used parts. And you're going to have service centers that are glorified repair shops that all they do are just buy broken machines, salvage parts out of them, and try to build a good machine out of a few broken ones. Or, as they likely expect you to, just go ahead and replace the machine, which is a huge issue for landfills. Now, I get it. One printer here or there is not going to be a devastating ecological disaster, but this is the path that we're moving down, and I don't think anybody can deny it here. As every single company at this point, other than the ones coming out of the EU, are effectively copying Bamboo, they are also running the same kind of style where eh, they're cheap enough, you'll just buy another one. And for your average business, yeah, that, that's what I would do. If my machine has this issue, I will look to see what else is on the market and potentially buy a different machine. Buy something that's faster, that's better, that has better network security because that's still a concern many years later. But certainly one that is also more repairable. If it's not more repairable, at least make it cheaper. There are salvageable items from these machines. It's just a matter of whether or not you want to go through the work. And we can see that Josh says, to be fair, I think their statement is kind of correct in that it's in there. It's glued in, not meant to be serviced, and they don't offer the whole unit as a part. But yeah, you need to remove the plastic corner part, pulling it off the horizontal rod. I was able to get it all off and back together without major issues. Fair warning, that's all your kinematic alignment, and it did look like on mine that there was a factory tensioning slash gluing process, but I was able to put it back together and it worked 
fine. These machines are clearly not designed to be serviced. And I would love to know from you all, because I think it begs the question, do you care if your machines are serviceable? Do you believe there is a right to repair from users? And do you believe that this is why open source is still out there and still exists and why open source printers tend to be adopted by businesses as well? At least they're adopted by ours. Because at least for me, I need my stuff to be repairable. Speaking of me, my name is Grant. Welcome to 3D Musketeers, where we help you get your printers back to printing with purpose. And if you are going through those kind of issues with your machines, you can reach out to us on all the social media, slide into those DMs over on Twitter or X or whatever egotistical maniacs are calling it these days. Or, which we'd love to see, is when you shoot a video and upload it to YouTube and tag us in that, because we get to see when people tag us in videos, which is pretty cool, because then we can actually see a little bit more through it. We'll help you and maybe feature your print in an episode. Moving on, we got a fail here from my buddy, the Nocturnist, aka Alex, who uh, actually gave me some tips about getting my hair cut very similar to the way that his is. He's got a really tight skin fade and I don't know if I could rock that, but he's got a preheat error and says, check the heat bed, heater, and thermistor wiring for possible damage. And, uh, well, it wasn't the heat bed that was the problem. He's got an issue here on his hot end. We can see that the wires have pulled away from the actual wiring harness for the heater cartridge. Unfortunately, replacing the heater did not solve the problem. So I would continue to look at the heat bed heater wiring. So look at that thermistor. This is one of the big issues with the Mark 3s, and I assume it's going to be somewhat of an issue with Mark 4s, Mark 4s's, and with pretty much any bed slinging 3D printer, you can have the wires fail over time. Now, given that this is an injection molded screen, this is likely a Mark 4s, which should not have any of these problems at this point. So I would make sure that it wasn't somehow damaged during assembly. If you did buy a fully assembled printer that it wasn't damaged during shipping, go through and make sure everything is okay. I know at least in my experience, it's normally those heat bed thermistors and it's why I keep a pack of them for the Mark threes. But now that I found out on the Mark 3.5, it is a completely different type of thermistor. I have a bunch of inventory of glass bead thermistors probably for no reason, but hey, maybe they are stronger. We will only see with time. I was going to be streaming the final of that build on Tuesday, but uh, unfortunately that is not going to happen because hurricane. So stay tuned for next week and we will get the rest of that build for the Mark 3.5 done so we can get another printer that is running ultra fast that also has the ultra reliable Prusa 3D backing. I'm sorry, but being able to service your printers is useful. We can see that he's able to buy these pieces. And I know, I know you could buy those same pieces for a bamboo. But if he did happen to have a bearing go out, it's an easy thing to replace. Next up, a bit of a PSA from Little Depo Muck, who is an awesome person in our Discord. And so is the Nocturnus for whatever it's worth. And if you do want to come hang out with us in our private Discord server, you can do so by joining at the $10 tier and higher. She is working on one of her Vorons here, and we can see that the PTFE has started to get wallered out. Over time, PTFE will wear out. And it's why on bamboos and other high-speed printers like Vorons, it is an item that you need to check more often than not. As the filament wears a channel into that PTFE, it can actually increase the amount of drag inside of that tube, creating false issues when it comes to extrusion, where the filament should be coming out just fine, but it's having trouble so the printer can throw errors, especially on things like the Prusa XL, where you have a relatively long reverse Bowden system. Any extra drag can cause the machine to think that it's actually clogged and throw an error. And that's why people like Repcord have designed a mod to move it over to the four millimeter internal diameter Bowden tube rather than the two millimeter. But it is something that you should keep on hand. It is relatively cheap. You can buy Capricorn tube, which we'll link to, and you can even buy just regular generic Bowden tube at a decent price bulk on Amazon. We keep a bunch of it in stock for when we need it. And I've used it for all different types of projects, 3D printers or otherwise. It's always good to have a little bit of PTFE tubing where you might need it. Check your Bowden tubes if you haven't, especially if you have a machine that is an actual Bowden printer and doesn't have an all metal hot end because those Bowden tubes are sincere wear items and can cause serious issues if you don't change them enough. 
So was it 200 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Celsius? A friend of mine sent this to me. Apparently somebody messed with the oven while he was away. We have the forbidden donuts, ladies and gentlemen. This is what happens when you use an oven to dry filament and set it to 200 degrees Celsius rather than 50 degrees Celsius. We do not recommend to ever dry filament in a regular electric oven. Their temperature control is not precise enough to do that and it is very likely that it is going to swing way past the target temperature and create problems. So please get actual filament dryers or food dehydrators or something that is designed to hold a really, really tight temperature tolerance. Because if you don't, you can end up with a bunch of money down the drain. Nobody wants to see this. Although that is the most interesting one that we've seen. Could also see a second photo here where, uh, yep, those are full spools for those that didn't realize that from the beginning. But yeah, this is very obviously like a baking rack for a regular oven. Please don't do this. And it's unfortunate because all of this is waste. There's nothing you can do about it. Quite frankly, you probably don't even want to use that grate and you definitely want to make sure that you clean the oven properly. Do not use self-cleaning features on ovens. They're dangerous. Just clean the oven manually. A little bit of elbow grease won't hurt you. Please be smart about this stuff, guys. If you're going to be going away, your filament is not going to be that wet. You don't have to dry it. I live in Florida. It is well over 50% ambient humidity in here, and if we lose power, it's only going to get worse, and our filament is just fine. Sure. The PLA can get a little bit brittle, drying it helps, the PETG gets a little bit stringy, a blowtorch fixes that problem post-print. It's fine. The vast majority of your basic 3D printing materials are not hygroscopic enough to be sincere and serious problems. I would caution you before you start baking your parts in ovens like this because it can also contaminate your oven which can contaminate food and the last thing we all need in this industry is more microplastics going into our bodies i love to know has this ever happened to you do you know anyone that this has ever happened to love to know in those comments down below I, this is a very easy problem to have occur and it's an easy problem to avoid so please take an extra couple of seconds and avoid that problem when and where you can but yeah bit of a shorter episode this week um, I'm a little bit nervous for this storm. Uh, it was just rated at a Category 5. It is expected to slow down before it makes landfall here in Florida Tuesday or Wednesday. If it makes landfall during, like, when it's light outside, I will be live streaming it so you guys can kind of get the experience of a storm without having to move to Florida. Otherwise, I just hope we're okay. We are likely to lose power, and if you didn't see, we recently did a video all about off-grid power. We'll card to it, so if you want to take a look at it, where I have a really affordable sub $1,000 off-grid power setup or we can generate over 1500 watt hours worth of energy just from the sun this will enable us to remain at least somewhat okay even if we do lose power we can keep the refrigerators running we can still cook meals it's not gonna run our air conditioner so it's gonna get a little swampy in here but hey call me shrek i guess because we'll figure it all out but yeah if you happen to live in the tampa bay area and you do need some help please do not hesitate to reach out to us again here is the shop phone number do not hesitate to call it or text it if you absolutely do need help from recovering from storms or whatever it may be we want to assist our local community wherever that we can and if you do happen to want a printed part from us and get it completely for free and you are in the tampa bay area you can come on out we will hand out parts for hurricane shutters just please reach out to us before you do that and if you are not in the tampa bay area and you do want to get one of these parts i will send it to you for the cost of a shipping label certainly beats trying to rush to get one off of amazon or uh if you want and you have your own printer we'll link to the file down in that description so you can get it and print it yourself. Just use at least eight perimeters because you want the actual fingers on it that grab the wing nuts to be completely solid. Make it out of PETG or really, really hot PLA, something that is strong, and then use a relatively lightweight chuck on a power drill and it will make putting up shutters so much faster. But yeah, guys, at this point, the storm's already gone. So a lot of what I said was going to get edited out anyways, but that is all I have for you all today. I hope things are okay here. Keep an eye on our Twitter or X or whatever the heck you want to call it. That's where I will be posting more personal updates as to what's going on, if we've sustained damages and what they happen to look like. That's all I have for you all today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one.